You know, last year when Nintendo made their announcements for the 35th anniversary of Mario, one of them was a re-release for Super Mario 3D World, which originally came out for the Nintendo Wii U. Now, of all the announcements that were made, that was the one I was most excited for. Turns out it wasn't going to be just a straight-up re-release, they were also adding Bowser's Fury, a second game, to the bundle. It's always nice when Nintendo goes that extra mile. Now, I remember playing Super Mario Bros. 3D World on the Wii U several years ago with my cousin Bill. I really enjoyed that game, and I was also a fan of Super Mario 3D Land, which came out for the Nintendo 3DS. So, it's finally out for the Switch. Here's my chance to give you my thoughts. I'm Eugene Morris of TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com, and this is my review of Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. So it's just another ho-hum day in the Mushroom Kingdom as Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad are just out for a walk when suddenly they meet the Sprixies. I think that's how you say their name. Well anyway, out pops Bowser, and at this point you should know the drill. Bowser has invaded their kingdom, captured its citizens, and it's up to the team to set things right. You know, I love how gun-ho Peach is here, and she's the first one to leap into action. No time to be a damsel in distress, baby. It's time to kick some Bowser ass. The whole game seems to pay homage to the original Nintendo game, Super Mario Bros. 2. No, 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 not that one. Yeah, the American version. With Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad all playable, and the Sprixies themselves having a strong resemblance to the creatures that appeared in that game. The main game features eight levels for you to beat, and if you are successful, you do unlock a post-adventure. Speaking of which, you can also unlock Rosalina from the Galaxy games, so in total you do have five playable characters here. In the end, the story will not win any game awards for best narrative, but it doesn't need to. It's a Mario game. It's all about getting the setup out of the way so you can get to the Mario gameplay goodness. Now as I mentioned, the main game has four playable characters. Mario, his brother Luigi, the Princess Peach, and her loyal servant Toad. Now like in Super Mario Bros. 2, they each have their own separate abilities. Mario is the jack of all trades, master of none, Luigi has his long jump, Peach can float, and Toad is the fastest. For my personal run, I prefer using Mario and Peach the most. The game takes the 2D mechanics of the classic Mario games and applies them to a 3D environment. As you beat levels, more will be unlocked as you make your way through your current world. Now beating a level is not enough, however. As you go through, you must find these green stars, as there are three hidden in each level. This is required, as later stages will force you to collect a certain amount in order to advance. Now, admittedly, this can be a bit annoying. I mean, I beat the level, shouldn't that be enough? You can also get these stamps to add to your collection. I'm not sure what good they're for, but hey, at least they're nice to look at. Now, each level presents its own type of challenge from mazes to run through, obstacles to maneuver around, and puzzles to solve. To help you through the adventure, you have the classic Mario power-ups. If you recall from my Super Mario Odyssey review, I mentioned that it was a bit disappointing that none of these power-ups were in that game. Well, here in 3D World, there is abundance of them. From the mushroom for size, the flower for firepower, cherries to make clones, and the leaf of the Tanuki suit. Speaking of which, this game has the infamous white Tanuki suit which will appear after you've died in a level a certain number of times in a row. Now, except for falling into a bottomless pit or touching lava, the suit will give you invincibility to help you get through the level you're currently in. Quick side note, I love it when Peach uses the Fire Flower. When the ponytail goes up, you know she means business. Also, lest I forget this one power-up that allows you to transform your character super-sized for a time, giving you the power to walk through obstacles. Step on me, Mommy. Other power-ups include the Boomerang. This one allows you to turn into a Boomerang Brother, which gives you the ability to... Well, yeah, you know. But one new power introduced here is the Cat Suit. Why cats? Because cats are awesome, that's why! Well, specifically, the Cat Suit allows you to climb walls, claw enemies, and do a dive while in midair. Other helpful items in this game include slot machines that will give you coins to help you get new lives, and toad houses to give you power-ups for your reserves. In addition, in some levels you will come across Captain Toad, the Treasure Tracker. With his help, you can gain extra green stars. He does not have the ability to jump, so you have to move the camera around in order to see the best way to move around a course to get the stars and avoid the enemies. Later on, he would get his own game. 
Hmm, I may have to check that one out sometime. Now, while going through a course, you have the ability to control the camera, which is something I tend to forget. So because of that, there were times where I would veer off course and end up doing a swan dive into an abyss. But it's not just that. Many courses in this game can get brutally difficult, to the point that I would not be above using that white suit to get through it. Yeah, I know, there was a time when I was offended by using that, but as I've grown older, I've chilled out on that front. Hey, use whatever you want to make the game more fun. That's what I say. So all in all, this game gives you that good old Mario challenge, but also the tools you will need to get through it. Now the music in this game, in my opinion, is some of the best that Mario has to offer. I personally don't think Mario music gets the kind of accolades that it deserves. Often when people think of great gaming soundtracks, franchises like Sonic, Zelda, Kingdom Hearts, and Final Fantasy are brought up, and rightfully so. But Mario tracks can also be just as gorgeous to the ears. To me, the soundtrack here is more than worthy of being added to any gamer's collection. The graphics of Mario games have always been consistent. Bright, cartoony, and colorful. Mario graphics have never strived for photorealism, nor should they. They have a carefree and childlike atmosphere that keeps the game inviting for children of all ages. They're just consistently good, and that's all I can ask for. Now let's take some time to talk about Bowser's Fury. In this separate adventure, Mario gets sucked into a world that's been taken over by a possessed Bowser who has been kaiju-sized. Mario must team up with Bowser's son in order to save Papa Koopa from himself. This one's a little bit more open world, as Mario is free to explore different sections in the world to find these cat shrines. These shrines are used to unlock lighthouses, but also you will need them to get the black tar off these giant bells. Why must you do this? Well, because occasionally, Bowser will show up, and when he does, you must touch the bell to grow into a super duper sized cat Mario. I guess it was only a matter of time when Mario got his own Super Saiyan mode. This part is pretty cool, even though there's nothing much to it. You just battle it out Godzilla-style on the terrain until you beat Bowser back. As far as the sun goes, you can set up how much you want the CPU to control him, or you can even bring in a friend to help you out. My wife found this part to be fun, as this was a way for her to join the adventure. As Bowser's son, as far as I could tell, you really can't get hurt, and his quick brush attacks can help you get through some pesky opponents. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy or a sell? Classic 3D Mario action with selectable characters. Great music with tight controls. A fun mini open world edition with Bowser's Fury. Whether you decide to go alone or with a teammate with either local or online, this re-release of Super Mario 3D World fits the bill. Hopefully this will give players out there a chance to experience what I feel is a hidden gem in Mario's repertoire. Also with Bowser's Fury, this does give the purchase a little bit more bang for your buck. I think this will go over a little bit better with gamers than the 3D All-Stars did, which did get a lot of flack for various reasons. Ultimately, if you are a Mario fan, I say reach into your pocket to purchase Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. But hey, that's just my two cents. You've been watching the Brotherhood of Gaming.com. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as always, keep on gaming.